What's going on guys, Elijah Porter here. Welcome back to the channel. Behind me is of course my 2001 Porsche 911 996 generation that I have now owned for almost an entire year. And over that year I have made some improvements, done some tasteful modifications in my opinion. And of course, after doing all that work and getting this car just about where I want it to be, I broke it. So if you're new to the channel, I bought this car back in January of this year with a rebuilt title and I've done a couple things to kind of make it better. Number one, when I originally bought the car, it had some really, really ugly aftermarket wheels on it that didn't even fit. So I have since changed those now, of course, to the stock rims. In addition, it now has new tires all the way around, which it desperately needed new tires when I bought it. Um, body work is in pretty decent shape. There are a couple little things here and there, but I've you know basically repaired some basic scratches and stuff as well. If we look to the interior, um, when I bought it, this driver's side seat uh, was very torn up. You can see I've done a leather repair and you can kind of see some imperfections. In my repair, the lighting is hitting it just right to really highlight those. But still, the seat is in much better condition now than it was when I bought it. The steering, I mean, sorry, the gear shift was also uh, quite worn out. I've since redone it as well and it's looking pretty nice. Um, I've also done a short shift kit on the car as well. Uh, just generally cleaned up the car and yeah i'm really happy with where this thing is right now um, it does still have a couple little issues but i don't think anything that's going to be a huge deal to take care of but yeah let's get out on the road and tell you how i messed up my porsche so i haven't been driving this car and this is actually the first time i've driven it in about three weeks and today i'm really only driving it because i have to um starting tomorrow i'm going to actually be out of town for the next like two and a half three weeks and uh, i'll come back to that later but so the car will not get driven for a while so i really wanted to get out on the road and make sure that you know the oil had moved around some and you know the gas hadn't just been sitting i just kind of wanted to make sure everything had been circulated you know get the battery started and you know let it run for a while so anyway i'm doing that today but i really haven't been driving this car and the main reason is because of the incident and i'm going to come back to what the incident is in a few minutes but anyway um yeah it's kind of a shame that i haven't been able to drive it because i did really kind of get the car where i wanted it and was really starting to enjoy driving it and it just seems like you know as soon as you fix one thing something else breaks and that's kind of a constant especially when you own as many kind of project things as i do like this and my cafe racer and of course there's going to be unexpected little things that come up when you buy a rebuilt title car but I think this issue that I'm having is partially my fault, but partially Porsche's fault. And uh, the two issues have just kind of met together and made it where I really can't drive this car dependably. So when I bought this car, I knew there were two main issues with it, besides all the cosmetic stuff and you know wheels and tires and all that stuff. Uh, the central locking system is definitely on the fritz. Something's up with that. I'm working on addressing it. And the second thing was that the front trunk did not open. And when I say it didn't open, I mean the electronic release would not work. You can pull the little button and you can hear it trying, but it will not actually open. And I believe that is due to a faulty or a weak uh, trunk lock actuator. Oh, so I was gonna wreck into me, I guess. Uh, so I diagnosed that as kind of being the issue and I've actually ordered the part to replace it, but because of the incident, I have not actually been able to replace it. So I'm gonna pull over right here, get out of the car and kind of talk to you and show you the issue that I'm having. So I really didn't know this at the time, but my issue actually started back when I went to film for Exotics on Las Olas several, well, I guess it's been more than a month ago now, but uh, yeah, my issue started then. So I parked up at Exotics on Las Olas and I went to open the front trunk and it would not open using the emergency release, which is what I've been using to open the trunk forever. I've never had a problem with it, but I couldn't pull it. And I didn't really understand why that was. And so, I didn't really think much of it at the time, but when I got out of the car, the car actually locked like it was supposed to, and the central locking system actually functioned as it was normally supposed to, and so I thought, well, maybe when the 
doors are locked, the emergency cable doesn't work. That didn't really make sense because the whole point of the emergency cable is so you can still get to the battery if the car is locked, but I just ignored it and moved on and I really didn't think about it anymore. This car is not my daily driver, so I don't really use the front trunk ever. Uh, I have my Ford Focus as my daily driver. This is just a more for fun and fun to drive car, so I never ever have to open the front trunk. So I didn't really think anything about it until this happened. So my wife and I took the car out to drive one weekend and we went to park at a place and as I parked I realized that I scraped the front bumper which I didn't really think was a big deal honestly. The car has been lowered some so it is easily to scrape it on these parking things and underneath this bumper is honestly it's very scratched up anyway I can't really get the camera under there to show you but it's extremely scratched up anyway so I was like oh that sucks but like not the end of the world I don't really care that much anyway and I don't usually scrape on the ones like in this parking lot these are pretty normal but this place had like huge parking bumpers when we went to leave though I realized the problem was a little bit more severe than what I thought as I backed out the whole bumper actually pulled off of the front of the car and when it did it popped both headlights out uh pop the side uh markers it's hard to do that with your finger when you're it popped the side markers out i would be a terrible terrible weather person but <laughs> trying to coordinate my hand but it popped the side markers out and it didn't really damage anything too severely but i realized i was having a bigger issue than i thought and my first thing was like well how did the bumper actually come off like that like i was not going fast it pulled like right off so i realized that underneath the bumper there are actually three screws that are supposed to hold the bumper on well those were missing um, they were not on the car so that's why the bumper just slid right off um, it is hinged at the top of course so the bumper literally just kind of like moved this way off the car so why is the front bumper coming off such a big issue well i can't get the trunk open like i mentioned and my problem is when the bumper came off it pulled the headlights with it and these will actually just slide right in and out it's the same on both sides and i can't get into the trunk to kind of fix them back in if you know anything about the 996s uh, there's a little like turn key on the inside of the trunk and that's what locks or unlocks the headlights in position so as i'm driving these could just fall out at any second and I'm not really that worried about that happening, but it is a risk that I really don't want to take. These headlights are pretty expensive to replace, and so I don't really want them to fall out. In addition to the possibility of the headlights falling out, the battery is located in the front trunk as well. And I don't really feel that confident driving a car that's this old, not being able to get to the battery. But since I can't get the trunk open, it doesn't make me that confident to be able to drive this car around in case I would need to jump it, or you know the headlights would fall out, or you know they could even just easily lose connection on the inside and stop working. So I haven't been that confident to drive the car. Now these front trunk latches on the Porsches are known to fail. It's very common for them to fail. You can find new parts everywhere to replace them and you can replace the actuator as well and i just haven't looked into it yet because like i said i don't use the trunk it hasn't been a big deal to me until now and my problem now is i can find no information about the emergency cable not working you can find plenty of information about the electronic release not working it's everywhere and everything says the same thing use the emergency release cable well mine doesn't work and so now i'm stuck and this is where i reach out to you if you have any idea how to open the front trunk without the emergency cable opening without the electronic thing opening if you have any idea how to get the bumper off um, if you have any idea basically of how to get this trunk open with the situation I'm in please comment down below or reach out to me on social media you can DM me at my Instagram it's just Elijah Porter official I will put it up here on the screen but I really need your help to solve this issue because of course it's preventing me from driving my fun car and I hate that Luckily, I guess I'm gonna be gone for the next couple weeks. Maybe I can figure out a solution online. But yeah, it's really preventing me from enjoying the car, which sucks because I've just spent all this time and money, honestly, getting this car kind of where I want it. And I do have the actuator to change so that the front trunk works like it's supposed to, but without me being able to get it open at all, I'm really stuck. 